<clears throat> hey, what's going on, everybody? Your boy JC, Everyday Thoughts is in the building. Uh, special guest for me tonight, Mr. Mary Brown, host of the Great Liberator Show. Everybody gather around. <clears throat> Tonight's topic is Black Men Accountability. So, everybody gather around. What's going on, everybody? I know it's a late night. How's everybody doing tonight? What's up? Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing all right. What's good with you, man? Yeah, chilling. What's good with you? <sighs> uh, nothing, man. Just got off of work, man. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Right, so, so what, 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 what you wanted to dis- What did you want to discuss? No, I mean black men accountability and stuff. You know. Right. Okay, and and what about black male? Um, black male accountability. I mean, I mean, for you, I mean, I felt like you was doing you was doing a good job when you first entered, you know, the whole YouTube, doing your, your podcast, and now all of a sudden you just try to like switch up. You know, you was all for the women, then all of a sudden you kind of switched up. Now you're just trying to attack and bash women. Like I never understood that. You know, I understand that you want a few uh, platforms, uh, BGS. Uh, you can talk to O'Shea, etc. You know. You know, the few platforms and I always just been like, you know, why does why to switch over, you know, why you kind of you know, you were four women and all of a sudden you kinda switch over to you now trying to demonize black like, women and stuff. That's the only thing I really like you know, criticize you on, you know. But right. other than that, you know, cool person, you're a good person though. You know, I appreciate you. Appreciate you putting yourself out there. You know, I enjoy being a caller, uh, being on your show and stuff, but you know, I just want to say like what happened with the the whole switch, the whole flip. You know, that's something I need to understand. It, it, it's, it's, it's not a flip or it's, it's not a switch. The fact is, is that about black women and black women have legitimate gripes about black men. And it seems to me that the problem comes in when anytime black black men or brothers begin to to express their gripes with black women, nobody wants to hear that. This is this is what would go on in my group and the men, whatever they they want to tell the men. Then when the men tell them something they don't want to hear, now they want me to put the men out the group. Now the men are toxic. Now I'm toxic because I'm not doing that. No, you're supposed to have a dialogue. See, there's a difference between a dialogue and a monologue. And for a long time within American society, black women for the most part have dominated the discourse on black male and female relationships. We've had movies after movies after movies, shows after shows after shows that ha- that where black women have expressed in no uncertain terms their gripes with black men, voiced their gripes. Now it's a problem. We've had a diary of a mad black woman. We've had had uh, authors like uh, what's his name, um, uh, Steve Harvey, act like a lady, think like a man. The entire discourse around black male and female relationships has centered around what black men haven't done for black women and where black men are lacking at. But the fact is, is that black women have many, have in many times and in many instances failed black men. This is very much a symbiotic uh, relationship between the two. And and the point is this. Whenever you criticize one, it's going to invariably, it's not, there's not one actor in male and female relations, black male, female relationships. And so the thing is, how do you bring a certain level of at one minute? That's why you would always hear me talk about at one minute and atonement, but you can't have at one minute and atonement with one side being able to express their being able to express their gripes and the other side being silenced. That's not the way it's supposed to work. It's it's about dialogue. So, okay, yeah, we got some uh, yeah. comments. Go ahead. Um, not so we have some comments around on your so what's going on, Marlon. Uh, Marlon said it was never a switch. You got some black women 
And we'll cheer on the you color, one minute. The, the, the color purple was was another was another was another movie. The color purple was another one. Um, you, you know, this, there has been a consistent theme, and the theme has been black men just can't get right. That's been the theme that black men just can't, can't get right. You know what I'm saying? And this this is this is um predominantly the issue. And now you have brothers who feel like because of the advent of social media, because of YouTube, they now have a have a a forum to voice their grievances and their gripes. See, and so this this is this is where it is. And 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 in fact Bro, I, bro. And 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 the fact and like a lot of these sisters, they want you to talk about these brothers, but they are the part of the problem because you're the one who's raising these men. So I, and I don't understand why they why they think they can divorce themselves from that reality. You're choosing the men, you're mating with the men, and then you're raising the you're raising the children into adults. Okay. So you have well, to put a certain level of accountability and and what the problem is here. Let me stop you there. Why are we well? Why are we blaming women for black men? You know, growing up to being adults. Why are why, why are we blaming them? And we a lot of times the black men talk about how women can't raise um, black boys them to be men. Like why we why do we in turn around put all the blame on our shoulders and not blame absent fathers for not stepping up, being inside of the home, being a good role model, good leaders. You know, that's what I don't understand. Well, well, check this out, Jonathan. If you have, see, it's it's going to be hard for someone like you to preach to to preach to brothers that y'all have to be better men, and then you have sisters continuing to fuck with the men who have no interest in being better men. So women they, get the they men. They choose all types of men, though. I mean, what's that again? Be, be real though. They choose all types of men. They choose all types of men. Really, they do. That's not what the that's not what the data indicates. And, and 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 here's the thing. If these women are choosing all types of men and, and they're continuing to arrive at the same conclusion with these men, well then maybe it's them. Because at that point the common the common denominator is them. If you're too if you're choosing a thug, if you're choosing a street guy, if you're choosing a professor, if you're choosing a choosing an educated lame, and it's the same conclusion with all of them, well then you're the I mean, I do I do agree you do have to take some personal accountability. Well, there, like I said, there's not that many options for a lot of women to choose from, you know. Even if you have the stuff together, you still have to worry about him cheating on you. You still have to worry about him, you know, maybe being a womanizer, et cetera, you know. Whether she has money, whether she don't have money, she's still going to get blamed at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, but women, women, women cheat just as much as men. Women cheat yeah, just that's as much as men. What I was saying, though, was like, even if she dated a dude that got money, oh, you know, you a gold digger, and next thing you know, you're dealing with a pookie or Ray Ray, you know, God, you're trying to help him out, you know, and it's like, why you keep dealing, dealing with broke dudes trying to build him up, you know, so it's like, damn what she do, damn what she don't, you know what I mean? Do you know what the 80, do you know what the 80, 20 rule is? Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, and what you have, because, because we have a particular type of male that has been promoted in black society as good is, and an affinity for certain type of male and so the and so what's what's going on here a lot of sisters are dealing with the are dealing with the same types of men they're they're, they're recycling the same men many times when they're sitting there talking about so-and-so ain't shit and then there's another sister talking about so-and-so ain't shit they're talking about the same dude because the same dude is it is fucking with all of them. You see what I'm saying? But the, at, at the end of the day, that's on them. You have to begin to shift some things in your value systems as as women. And, and check this out, because you talked about the ways in which the narrative can go against black women. But as black men, black men are in a unique position in American society where they can always be be blamed for something and be... be uh, be promoted or or or, perp or or portrayed as the one who just can't get his shit together, and a lot of times that's not the way it goes. There's always two sides to every story. There's always two. Tell you what the man was doing, but they're not going to tell you what they were doing. So they're going to tell you that the where the man left, he he a big fight the man. 
they're not gonna tell you that they was being disrespectful to the household coming in when they want to when coming and going when they get ready. They're not gonna tell you that they were being they were being disrespectful, telling them shut the fuck up, bitch ass nigga. See, they're not gonna tell you these things. All they're gonna tell you is he left, he abandoned me. But they're not telling you why. And that's what you gotta understand. There's always where really there's three sides to a story. Her side, his side, and the truth. And the, and as I've consistently stated, the truth is somewhere in the middle on a lot of these issues. And you can't have a vibrant family unit and a vibrant community with one side being told take accountability and the other side being given a pass. That's not the way it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be reciprocal. Reciprocity. It's about reciprocity. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that. But like I said, I mean, a lot of times you see have to blame, you have to put the blame on the head on the shoulders of Put the blame on the men because we're all supposed to be the leaders and we're not doing a good job leading to the household, etc. Well, 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 define, define leadership. Define that. Because you can't lead somebody who's already predetermined that they're not going to follow because these same women that you're, that you're telling me I got to lead will, will sit up there and say I'm not submitting. And they've already predetermined they're not submitting. Well, check this out, Jonathan. Why do lesbians have the high... Why do black lesbians have the highest rates of domestic of domestic abuse out of all lesbian couples. Why is that? And maybe because they they argue a lot, you know. What what you said? No, I was just saying they might maybe because they argue a lot, you know. Wait, no, wait, no. <laughs> Cause I just got <laughs> off, Angela, and I I don't look presentable. The, the, the lesbians have the highest rates of domestic partner violence out of all lesbian groups because their their disposition is I'm not submitting. Not even submitting. Okay. Submitting to each other. And in a relationship dynamic, if you want the relationship to work, you have to submit. Everybody but submit. is not but it's not but it's not a domination though. You know no, what I'm saying? Not. It's about it's about two people coming together. Right, but but check this out. We'll see what happens. We get these we get these terms conflated. Submission is a voluntary action between two equals. That's what it is. Because in, in, it, it, it's, it's a give and take. It's an ebb and a flow. It's about reciprocity. In order for one to give or, or to get, the other has to give. And in order for the other one to get, the other has to give. So both, uh, both uh, are, are submitting. You both, you both submit. But the women have a problem with the word submit because they're meaning domination when that's not what it means you can't cooperate with somebody you can't limit to somebody if if you're not submitting to them both of that's you have not, to that's not all the women though that's just a select that's like a select pool of women that's that's not really submissive but you have to give a woman something to submit to like what do you really submit but, but, yeah, to well, right? but right but that's the part of the that's part of the trade off because I, I I see I will tell sisters if this dude is not on his, if if this dude isn't offering you something, you have no business messing with him. And if you decide to mess with him, in spite of the fact that he's not offering that offering you nothing, well then that's on you. You're choosing that man. You're choosing this man. See, look, this is what's gonna happen, Jonathan. If I get with a woman, right? Yeah. And I'm doing everything the woman says she wants, right? Yeah. And sexual. I get ass. I get I get I get the pussy, right? <laughs> and then you got a dude over here who ain't about shit, ain't got a goddamn thing going. He lets it know he lets it be known to know in certain terms. I'm not loving you. I don't love him. I leave him. All I want to do is hit the first night. What that mouth do? You gotta bust it wide open. And he on some bullshit. Then and he gets it from the woman. Well, then that makes me look like a fool. Because what that means is I paid more for her. For her sexual companionship than he did, and this is what happens uh, because these women will position, then it incentivizes males to have that type of disposition. It's just like if I go to a grocery store and I buy a, I buy a, I buy a slab of ribs for forty dollars, and then you come get the slab of ribs for free. Who the fuck? Who the who's the fool? I'm the fool because I paid forty dollars for it when you got it for free. That's what yeah. these women do. So how I'ma tell them? How I'ma tell them men to be better, and you still messing with men who have no interest in being better? Yeah. And that's what that's what these sisters is just be wasting. 
Okay. Well, why you continue to mess with these sorry ass men? I don't believe in that. Well, like I said, let's let's encourage men to have get their stuff together and quit being so poor choices because you're basically saying indirectly that most men ain't about nothing though. You know what I mean? Well, I'm not, so I'm not gonna say well let me let me ask okay. you this, John. Yeah, yeah. Check this out. What do you think is the average uh sex part sex partner count for a man? Just the uh, the average black guy, just a very very average. What do you think in, in in his entire life cycle? What do you think is going to be his average sex sex partner count? His body count. What's going to be his body count? Probably what ten to fifteen partners. Ten to fifteen partners. Now a yeah. woman in her in her average lifespan, what is going to be her, what's going to be her body count? <laughs> Seventy five to one hundred. Well, it's going to be more than that. Well, but, hold, on, you know. hold on, hold on, you just said it. So hold hold on, Jonathan, you just said it. Right. At, 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 at the max, the average guy's um body count is going to be about ten to fifteen. For the yeah. woman, it could be it could be a high it could be as high as hundred, which means these women are men because they're women. See, it's it's always easier for a woman to get sex. Because she's the prize in the sexual mating market. This is the way. This is the way it works. So, so what that means is you can't say a majority of a majority of men don't, uh, don't have their stuff together. What you can say though is the majority of the men they like fucking with don't have their stuff together because that's what turns them on. See, so it's so 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 it it, it goes both ways. Now I'll tell those men to be better, but better because you're giving them what they want. You're giving these men what they want. So what, what be better for what? Why why be better when you busting it open for me anyway? And that's the way these dudes think. And you can't change the way they think because this is the way males have been thinking and operating for hundreds of years. This is why we had at one time in in, in, in um in American society we, we had shotgun weddings. Be because it was uh the men or the fathers of these girls who would make these men do what they're supposed to do. See? But we don't have that now. So see, women have been liberated because of because a lot of these social movements, the social mores have changed. So they've been liberated to to, to engage in sex however they want. So they that, that comes with a certain level of accountability. It just does. Yeah, but I mean you gotta be real though. I mean, if you're not a woman's not having sex with a man. Just like what what, what Asian would say, she's not gonna be able to maintain the situation, you know. So you gotta keep, keep in count of that too. That's what dudes are asking for, but then when I sit over here and shame a woman for having sex, but yet want sex out of her, knowing that they're not gonna marry her before they have sex with her. So right. you know what I'm saying? But yet we're gonna sit here and complain, bitch, you complain about single mothers, and not a lot of men are out here thinking about, okay, let me. Marry her, give her my last name, like it was back in the day, like in the shotgun wedding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why not do that? Why not do it the right way instead of making her a single mother? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I mean, because that's just the that's just the nature of the beast, man. Like you're you're gonna you're gonna have you're going to have, you know, rogue elements that'll take advantage of that'll take advantage. Like this is just what it this is just what it is. I mean, it's 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 just like this. If the Brinks truck is driving down the road with all the money in it, and then it crash and the money spill out onto the floor, people going you could you could be out there. Y'all know y'all shouldn't be picking this money up that then fell out this Brinks truck, but people gonna stop and pick up the money because the money is there. You know what I'm saying? And this is the way it is for a lot. They like the pussy there. Why not take it? The women making it so easily available. Why not take it? The women ain't requiring me to be a man or or to provide anything. Why not take it? See, this is the way these men think, and and that's just what it that's just what it is. <laughs> that's what it is, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I understand everything that you're saying. Yeah. That that would work in a perfect world, but we don't live in a perfect world. That's the you know we don't live. That's just not realistic. It's not practical. So well, if women are going to engage in this casual mating thing. Well, then they have to be they have to be willing to take accountability for that. This is, it comes with a certain level of, of accountability. Well, my thing is, I mean, they are the same account. They are the ones who are raising the kids. They're not the one that's stepping out the family. You know what I mean? Like you see a lot of men do. You know? No, no, no. Listen, when I, when I say take accountability, take accountability for the men that you're choosing. Take accountability for that because 
motherhood is is going to start with the type of man you choose to be a father. And if you throw inhibition into the wind and caution into the wind, and then you compound that with the fact that you're mismanaging your reproduction because you, obviously you're not using protection or you're using it incorrectly, well, then that comes with a certain level of accountability. Because I, this is what I said. Men create single mothers, but see, you got to yeah, understand you that. that. You did say that. Yeah. Yeah, but there's always a counter to everything because it's about because it's two. So men create single mothers, but women create deadbeat fathers. A man cannot be a father if you don't open your legs and let him bust up nut bust up nothing. It just can't happen. It's impossible. So you said, you said, you said women create David David dads. Uh, yeah. I mean, I gotta disagree with you on that one because a man gonna take care of responsibilities, you know, regardless. Of uh, how many babies he has, he's gonna make sure he take care of his children, take care, take care of responsibilities, you know. So they don't really correct, they don't correct that. Some, 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 some men will, but some men won't, which is why we had shotgun weddings. See, when, when, when the feminists said we're gonna throw off the oppressive patriarchy, they were talking about throwing off the fathers because at one point in time. The sexuality of the daughters was perceived as the property of the fathers. This is why the father would give the would give his daughter away at the wedding. But the feminists said they didn't want that. They didn't want the oversight of the father in their reproduction and in their mating choices. So they wanted to throw that off. Hence the sexual liberation, sexual liberation movement, women's sexual liberation. They didn't want the oversight of the father. That's toxic masculinity. So I'm saying so now they threw that off. They want to be empowered women. They want to be able to. They want to be able to do whatever they want to do with their sexuality, and that comes with a certain level of exposure, and and risk. It comes with a risk, because you don't have that. You don't have a man who's overseeing it. You don't have that masculine oversight. The women threw that off in the '60s. They said they didn't want that anymore. That's just what it is. They said they didn't want it. They said we are throwing off the oppressive patriarchy. Patriarchy and fatherhood are synonymous. You see what I'm saying? Patriarchy and fa patriarchy and fatherhood are synonymous. And in, and in this way, the feminist movement has been subversive to to family. You know what I'm saying? It just has. You know, one thing I said was feminism didn't destroy the black family, and it didn't. But that doesn't mean it that doesn't mean it doesn't have a harmful effect. It's going to have a harmful effect. But that doesn't mean it's a foregone conclusion that the family is destroyed if you make a decision to be better, if you make a decision to have a family. See, having a family is a decision. You have to choose and decide to do that. It's a decision. And, and it's, not, it's not a decision that you make at one single moment in time. It's a decision that you make daily because it never stops. You're not Now, while we're talking about this, Jonathan, let's talk about this Aisha Curry situation because... I see everybody is in a tizzy about. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just made a video about it, but uh, we can talk yeah. about that school. Right, yeah, like everybody's in a tizzy about Aisha Curry. When the fact is, is Aisha Curry is um, well within her rights to feel the way that she feels. See, this is the way. This is the way. Uh, it, it, the mating, the mating dynamics work, and uh, it never the mating competition never stops just because you're married. See, th this is this is the lies that men have been told about women. That, you know, you marry that woman and now you got that on lock. You you ain't got to worry about another, you ain't got to worry about her being attracted to another dude. You ain't got to worry about another dude being attracted to her. That woman is forever gone. That's yours no. until death is gone. No, you still, gotta, you still got to do the little things. I mean... Yeah, you still, but not even... But see, not not even that. Let me tell you. And see, this is this is why she feels. This is why Aisha Curry feels some types of way, some type of way, because Steph Curry is a superstar, and he has groupies and all types of women after him, right? So he yeah. knows that he's the shit. He knows that he carries a certain level of swagger and authority because of that. Aisha Curry, on the other hand, she's not getting that same energy. So now she's beginning to be insecure and doubt herself. Do I still do it for him? Am I still turning them on? What is something wrong with me? It ain't nobody, ain't no guys trying to get at me. What is something wrong with me? I've had three kids. Am I fat? 
You see what I'm saying? These are the things that play in a woman's mind, and it's not just the woman, because as a man, it'll play in your mind. Yeah. See, and, and one thing we all want as human beings is attention. When it, when a baby is born and it's cry, it cries, it's crying for attention. That's the first thing you need as a child or as an infant or a newborn is attention. So it's a normal human behavior to desire attention. And that attention will build up your confidence. See, we all want, want validation. See, and, and, and look, this is the way a lot of guys doing it. Like, they, they view it like, she, she should be content. She with Steph Curry, she this, she that. Like, it's just like when you buy a new car. If I go out right now and I get me a brand spanking new Mercedes, Maybach, when I first get it, I'm going to be like, yeah, this is the shit right here. I'm going to want to drive it everywhere. I'm going to want to go everywhere in it, be seen everywhere with it. If it get a scratch, I'm going to want to clean it up right, right quick. If I eat in it, I'm going to make sure I'm going to make sure I'm being very careful not to mess it up. But then over time, as, as I become familiar with it and the newness wears off, I'm going to become more neglectful. I'm going to become complacent. I'm going to be like, man, I'll, I'll pick that cup up later. I don't have to get it right now. You yeah, know, yeah, I, yeah, that's good yeah. Enough. And that's the way, that's the, it's the same way with your, it's the same way with your mate. It's the same way with your mate. So she's feeling some type of way and it's perfectly normal for her to feel some type of way. So what this means for Steph Curry is you have a problem and it's up to you to solve that problem. Because if you don't solve that problem, another dude is going to be in between our legs. Yeah. So it's up to you to figure out how to alleviate that issue. You know what I'm saying? You got all that money. You better create some time and some space to do something about it. That's what you have to do. See, we like, as men, we like the idea of leadership when it's time for submission from the woman and when it's time for respect from the woman. But then when it comes time to, to, to problem solving, now we have an issue. See, being, manhood is all about stewardship. What kind of steward are you? See, and within the term stewardship is encompassed all those other, all, all, everything else we're talking about. Respect, love, submission, all these different things. You can't be neglectful of your mate. And it's the same, the same thing goes for women. We, we all, when you're in a relationship with somebody that long and you've and you've been together that that long, since 15, these types of things are gonna come up, and it's up to one another to figure out how to validate that person. And that's why I was telling people a few months ago, a relationship is not built on trust. See, trust, trust is a very abstract thing. Trust is, it, trust is a faith-based thing. It's something that you can't see, that you can't feel, that's not quantifiable. It's a belief-based thing. It's about validation. And validation is concrete. It's about the actions that you take to validate that person's uh, presence in that relationship. And that's how you keep the relationship going and moving forward. But in this modern time, we've gotten away from that because you have, in the black community, Jonathan, single people outnumber coupled and married people. And so that's a problem. That's a problem. But as far as the male accountability, nothing's changed. I'm just not going to move when women tell me to move and talk about what they want. I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about when I want to talk about it in my own time. That's what I want them to understand. You don't tell me what to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's what you do. That's what you do. Don't let these women run. These women will try and run you. No, I'm going to talk about what I want when I want. And if you try and make me talk about what I don't want, well, then I'm going to talk about you. And that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I feel you on that though. But like, I mean, but as far as it, Aisha Curry, like I said, I just feel like she really, she may not be in her knees, man. You know, like I said, like you said, it's his job to um, problem solve and make sure that she feels yeah. you know, reassured. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. So now all the brothers, all the brothers, see, see how these women are? A, a group of a bunch of men who Google eye women all fucking day have a problem with a woman wanting attention. So I'm saying, and see, this is why you have a lot of brothers who don't want to take accountability for the fact that many of them are shitty mates, okay? Let's see. You make $10 an hour. Your sex game at, 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 at best is a, is a C-minus. 
you're not taking care of the home like you're supposed to. You got shit falling all apart. You don't know how to use hand tools. You see what I'm saying? But you think because you have a title of being a man, you have a title of being a husband, you have a title of being uh, this, this girl's significant other, she's supposed to be content and complacent with that. That's not the way it works. It, it doesn't work like that. And it never has. You're supposed to stay on top of your game. You're supposed yeah. to stay on top of your game. Yeah, just like just like you know, he had to play basketball. He has to continue to go work out. He has to continue to go to practice, still study, etc. You know, but it's like, why do you think? Why do you think that so many guys kind of just bullshit when it comes down to that woman and stuff? You know, they kind of be uh, just going to do the bare minimum come down to their relationship, where they want to put their heart into everything else, like their music career, their rap career, their um, business, etc. But it comes down to the woman; they just want to do the bare minimum. Like, why do you think that is? Because it's because that's portrayed as weak. You see, because what you have, you have a bunch of people who failed, and they failed at relationships, both men and women. And rather than own the fact that they failed and that many of those failures are on their own shoulders, they want to blame the other party and blame all these exterior extenuating circumstances. And what they've done, they've grabbed. Uh, They've seized the microphone when it comes to the conversation between black men, black women, black male and female relationships. And so consequently, we have a culture now where it's perceived as weak for a man to be attentive to a woman, for a man to be loving towards a woman, for a man to be caring towards a woman, for a man to be empathetic towards a woman, because this is the socialization. Let's be real. Let's not act like we haven't had at least 30 years for, 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 for many black males where their role models have been fucking Snoop Dogg, 50 goddamn cent, Iceberg Slim, you see what I'm saying? And all and all, the, the, the dope boys and the drug dealers in the neighborhood. These this has been these men role models. So that's the that's the standard of manhood they're predicating their manhood on. And they've seen the they've seen these men convey a certain type of message about the female counterpart and about black women. And many of these men have internalized it. And you know what? And you know what's more tragic, Jonathan? What? Many of the women have internalized it too. The fact is many women don't put value on themselves. Many women yeah. have no sense of uh, self have a low sense of self-esteem. Many women don't put value on on uh on their se on their sexuality. See? And so what it does, these two individuals who have been given a who have been getting a certain type of who have been given a certain type of message about black women they validate each other's disrespect of the black women see they validate that and it, and then when you do that it creates a it creates another subculture of self hatred that's internalized as misandry for the women because now the women have a certain type of issue with the men because the men have have treated them the way that the women have portrayed themselves and the way that uh, these same, those same men I talked about earlier, the drug dealers, the pimps, and all these other uh, other men have portrayed about black women. Yeah, but my thing is we got to do a better job as far as having a better image for the black men. There are some guys that are businessmen, they only own companies, they are uh, homeowners, and, you know, we got to push that out more than in the media as opposed to just talking about the only, thing we, only way we can make money is by selling rap video or playing basketball or football. We got to show the more, us being more positive within the community and showing that there are positive black men out there for women to go after, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, of course, see, you, see what's required is a cultural shift. You have to shift, the, you have to shift the culture. And if you don't shift the culture, then nothing, nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to change if you don't shift the culture. Like these things that's playing out now, these are cultural problems. They're cultural um, dynamics, you know, that, that play themselves out along along the lines of gender, and it's it, and it's it's pronounced in the black male female dichotomy and the black male and female relationship dynamic. That's what it is. Like you have a you have a lot of brothers and a lot of sisters who, for fear of being hurt for fear of being made a fool of, have an ambivalence to 
monogamy, have ambivalence to relationships, have ambivalence to family. Like this is what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, this is really what it is. And like I said, these people who, who have nothing but a mountain of failure serving as the backdrop of their lives are now given the microphone and the ped in the in the the pedestal and the pulpit to speak on relationships from an authoritative level. Like I've never seen that. If 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 you failed at owning the business, I'm not gonna listen to you about business. If you failed at getting fit, I'm not gonna listen to you about fitness. Yet somehow in this modern time as black people, we give moral authority and moral weight to people who, who obviously are suck at relationships, you know, <laughs> and, and that's my advice to, to young brothers and sisters. If it stop taking advice from women who can't keep men and stop taking advice from men who can't keep women, because at the end of the day, it's not that complicated. We make it more complicated than what it is because a lot of us are selfish and self-centered and that goes both ways. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, I do agree with you on that. I mean, like I said, you do, you do make some good points. That's why I do commend you, you know, being with your wife and uh, having that family structure to, to lean off of, to guys can, like, look at and uh, follow. You know, like I said, any kind of come on here and have beef, you know, I always have good respect for you, respect the content, respect everything you do, and I just appreciate you, you know, having your own voice, you're doing different things. I'm proud of you, man. All right, yeah, yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, you know, it's it's just about it's just about balance. It's about balance, and you can't have balance with with one side being able to say anything they want to say, and then you try and, and then you try and beat the other side into submission. And that's what those women would like to try and do to these brothers. I'm like, that's not gonna work. You gotta let these men say what to say what they gotta say, even if you don't want to hear it. Now imagine the disposition of these sisters in their relationships. They think it's all about them. See, many of these women only think a relationship is in jeopardy when they're not happy. This is, why, this is why they'll say happy wife, happy life. But the fact is, both of y'all have to be happy. The man's happiness is just as important as yours. It's not just about you. It's about him too. Yeah. See? And, and that's what a lot of these sisters believe. Well, he, I mean, shit, he, I'm giving him pussy. He should be satisfied with that. You know how many niggas want this ass? Like, that's the way a lot of women think. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, that's the way the bare minimum. It's not like supporting that man. It's not really... You know, speak a life to that man. He's giving that man some pussy every now and then. I mean, that's okay, but a man can get that anywhere he wants to, you know? Let me tell, and let me, let me tell you how, how these women will marginalize men. And a lot of this is the men's fault, too. But, and, and see, this is how, like I told you, it's symbiotic. It's symbiotic. Like when these dudes be like, you got to, uh, the woman has the power of, the woman has the power of sex. The woman has the power of sex. See, what you're saying when you say that, implicit in that is, as a man, you always want it, Right? So what this allows the woman to do is to marginalize your concerns outside of sex. So what a woman will do, if a man has an issue with something, with the woman, instead of the woman actually working on the real issue that the man has the problem with, she'll try and uh, placate this man through sex. So, and you'll see, and you'll see sisters do this because whatever the, whatever the problem is, like, oh, he just needs some head. I'm gonna give him some head, girl, and he gonna go to sleep and he gonna be over it. But no, the issue that the man has a problem with is still there. So it has so so the answer isn't you giving him bomb head. The answer isn't you riding him for two hours. That's not the answer. The answer is dealing with the issue that he has as a man. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. It's all about getting both both parties' needs met, you know. Like right. I said, just like you said, like leadership is all about all serving to, you know, after you do say some of your videos, you know what I mean? It's about serving you know, being a pioneer, you know, it's not about being supporting mm -hmm. there or thinking that you're above right. everybody. You know, you're the leader, you know, you're supposed to be, you know, everybody wants to be underneath your watch, your, your tender, your care, you know what I mean? Right, like, like, like leadership is, is, is not you telling somebody what to do. Leadership is not giving orders. Leadership is leading by example. And yeah. if as a man you're going to be the leader, then you have to, you, you should not be asking your woman to do something you're not willing to do. And if you're willing to do it, she shouldn't have to because you're doing it. But these dudes don't want to hear that. You see what I'm saying? They don't want to hear that, man. You know, and, and so, like, this is this is the climate. Like, this is the climate. You got to realize many of these individuals 
is have grown up and haven't seen any functioning working relationships to, to, to speak of. So they're cynical and they're ambivalent about relationships. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, because I feel like a lot of times, you know, you growing up in these broken homes and you really haven't seen that, that family structure and um, it's really clouding your, your mind and judgment about what a relationship, what a real healthy marriage is, you know? Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's about, um, it's, it's symbiotic, man. It's symbiotic. And and that, symbi that symbiosis does not merely begin and end with the positive. It, it works the same way neg in the negative. So if as a man, you're sitting out here, you're getting caught cheating, you got all types of women calling your fucking phone all times of the goddamn night, eventually your woman is going to begin to mimic your behavior. And see, that's what a lot. That's what a lot of these guys don't want to admit. See, what a lot of these dudes want, they want to be able to do they do that type of shit, and then just have the, the woman have no recourse because many of them see that as masculine behavior. Again, the male role models they've had have been rappers, D boys, drug dealers, and pimps. So they think that's masculine behavior. So the woman not supposed to want to do that because she ain't a man. She, she can't do it. I, I could do that, but she can't. That's not the way it works. No, that's, yeah. that's that toxic masculinity, though. You know, boys be boys, that kind of stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, you know, um, that's just what it is, man. I, I, I'm, I'm always, like I, like I said, I'm not pro-black man. I'm not pro-black woman. I'm not pro -black. <laughs> that's what I've consistently, that's what I've consistently said. There is, to me, there is no side. Because no matter who you're talking to, it's going to lead to the other. It's going to lead to the other. We're, we're, we're two, but we're one. Yeah. You know, we're two, but we're one. That's the, that's the way that works. We're two parts of, it's just, like a, it's just like a magnet. You take a magnet, the magnet has a North Pole and a South Pole. It has a positive charge and a negative charge, but it's one magnet. It's the same thing. If you start at the positive, you're going to end at the negative. If you start at the negative, you're going to end at the positive because they're one. See, and what, and, and what a lot of these individuals have a problem with is that when they look at the other, they see themselves. The, the, what, the, the problem that a lot of these men have with these sisters is that they see themselves in these sisters. They hate the fact that these women act just like them. These women act just like them, and they have a problem with that. And when the women look at the men, they see themselves too, because the men came from them. So what you really have a problem with is yourself. The other is yeah. just serving as the mirror image that allows you to see the ugliness about yourself that you refuse to to actually deal with. See? So, you know, that's what it is. All right, well, Joe, she had a question. She had broken health and nothing to do with it. I know with men today that are sitting in jail for murder and they have both parents. Yeah, I mean, it's all about a conscious decision, though. I mean, when you reach a certain age, you can't really blame your upbringing, your family, your friends. You got to take accountability for your own actions when you reach a certain age, you know. Jo Joanne, okay. Joanne, that, that's, that's, that's not true. What, what we're talking about here is behavior, <laughs> behavior patterning. That's what we're yeah. talking about, behavior patterning. Look, I brought this up a few days ago. Remember at one time in our socialization, we would say, this, this is what we would say, Jonathan. It would say, Jonathan and Joanne sitting in the tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. <laughs> First comes love, then comes marriage, next comes a baby and the baby carriage. Do you see that? Yeah. See that? See what see what the nursery rhyme is conveying into, yeah. the, into the child's psychology subconsciously? First comes love, then comes marriage, Next comes a baby in the baby carriage. So it gives you an order to how you build the family. Now look what we got. That's just my baby daddy. Who that is? That's my baby daddy. Who that is? That's my baby daddy. That's just my baby daddy. See what I'm saying? Now look at what we have socializing the children. See what I'm saying? Now look at how the children are socialized. So the broken home is vitally, the, the broken home is vitally important. And it's the thousand pound gorilla in the room that nobody wants to that nobody wants to address. Yeah, I mean that was good. That was a good uh that was a good uh sentiment as far as 
you know, love baby, then have a family, but now it's like we got backwards. We got babies, and you're trying to find love, and then you're trying to fight exactly. her. And, that, and that's and that's what these that's what these sisters yeah. do. They have babies from these dudes, and then it makes it it's going to make it harder for them. Your, well, your husband can go sit on it. He don't know what he's talking about. Now, he can come on in and get this work if you want. He don't know who he's dealing with. I <laughs> yeah, but it's he, just like, but you were the one that you was the one that said that, that men are the one that, that, that controls the family structure, though. So if it's out of line, that we not have to put the blame on the man because he's the one that's supposed to be the head. He's supposed to be well, the one. Well, yeah, well, well, check this out. I mean, ultimately, I'm going to put the onus on the men because you're yeah. men. That's what you told me. You said you're men. And the fact is, too many men today are pleasure driven. They have no principles. They have no morals. They have no standards. All they care about is getting their penis wet. So <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. I, you, the women are just like you. The women are out of order because you're out of order. That's what that's I'm saying. Like, the black woman is a reflection of the black man, though. Like, if we're not in order, then how can we expect a black woman to be in order? We expect submission, but we don't expect to reciprocate that towards black women, you know? So, you know, we yeah, just well, have to it's, prove it's ahead, like it's like Frederick Douglass said, it's easier to, to raise strong children than to, than to repair broken men. And yeah, a lot of a lot of these men are broken because they have broken patterns. They have broken patterns. So I'm saying like <clears throat> a son is meant to follow in his father's footsteps. He's meant to follow, follow in his father's footsteps. That's what a son does. This, the relationship between a father and a son is a journeyman apprentice relationship. So what does the what does the boy do when there is no father? Or what what does the boy do when the father don't ain't stun him and don't want to be bothered? What does the son do then? What pattern does the son follow? Because the father's in jail or because the father's dead because he was living that thug life. What does he what does he do then? And this is the this has been the reality for many of these brothers. That's what I was saying, though. That's why I said the issue is like more so father's home, dad being men stepping out as more as opposed to single mothers, you know, well, doing all they can for their kids and stuff. You know? Yeah, but but again, it's still the woman still plays a part because the man can't be a father if you don't open your legs. So what that means is you have to be more you have to be more discerning about the types of men you give that privilege to. Because it's so important. See, that's what I'm saying. You can't have a casual approach to sex. You can't have that. It's no such yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, right. Sex is the act of procreating. We, we, we mate so we can mate, and mating is making children. It's making offspring. See, they have a pro A lot of these individuals have a problem with that. They wish they could. you can't divorce sex from its meaning and its purpose. And its meaning and its purpose is to is to create children. So you can't have a casual approach to sex, sis. You can't do that. It's something well, you have to take seriously. But tell you about it, we gotta you gotta you gotta teach teach young men more to, you know, protect themselves a lot more than just to have give away their seeds like you know, yeah. Halloween thing. You gotta teach these, these young boys about their legacy, the power of their last name, etc. You know, and not a lot right. of brothers are having that type of talk. Not a lot of fathers in the home tell them about their legacy. What do you want to be remembered for, and uh, all that kind of stuff. You know. Right. Yeah. That, that, like I said, that plays. See, the, 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 what I'm saying is, you have to give you have to give a message to both of them. You don't. Yeah, just yeah, you don't just socialize one. You got what? No, I'm saying because all, cause really much all the pressures on the woman are still far to close your legs. But why not get more men to like look? You know, let's instead of trying to have sex with her, let's marry her before we try to impregnate her. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I, well, like I said, like I said, I'm well, like I said, men are, men are not going to teach their son them. They're going to expect a woman to be a virgin until her wedding day. You know what I mean? Or why is there a double standard? Yeah. I don't understand that. Well, I, I think I, I think it's um, you know we're past that now. I think we we really are like a, a lot of guys don't really expect that from women, and, and and then what you really have is you know a bunch of individuals who 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 can't delay gratification. They just gotta have it, and and this goes, um, you know it it, it goes both ways. Like I said, we had an entire social movement. That was meant to give women 
the liberty to to engage in sex however they want to engage in sex. So you so now you can't pass the book to the men. You wanted to be sexually liberated. That's what you wanted. Well, let's just be honest, though. I mean, if a, man, a woman was like, "Look, we're gonna close our legs," you know. I mean, just look at how much what, how much guys are the rape and how much sexually active a lot of men are towards the women. You know, look how you know crime and how much rape will go up just because. A woman but, said well, no. well, see now, now what you're doing? Number one, you're marginalizing men. Number two, you're acting as if, um. Men are always the aggressors in sex, which is act which actually marginalizes the woman and and desexualizes the woman because the woman is just as much a sexual being as the man. Yeah, that's true. So, that's, true. So it, 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 that's 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 your your thinking on that is too linear. Just to say, that, okay, well, if the woman close her legs, then they gonna they, they, these men gonna start raping. Them. That's no no like. Not not so much that, but I'm just saying. But how many how many how many women are are actually celibate waiting on a husband? But a lot of brothers, they don't give those type of women any kind of time or attention. The ones that say, oh, I'm celebrating on the way to their marriage. You know what yeah, I'm saying? They don't look at it like they want the woman that's fast and easy. Yeah, and she's I mean, gonna go, she's going to go to somebody else, you know? Right, yeah. I mean, that's 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 true, too. Like I said, it's a, it's, it's a culture, man. It's a culture. Well, then, like I said, they're in the same breath. Well, we talk about we want women to respect themselves, but who are we going after? Who are we love lusting over? You know what I'm saying? The, the strippers, yeah. the Instagram, right. you know what yeah. I mean? It doesn't make any sense. So. Right, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, on, on a certain level, these are very primal base, you know, base instincts. Men are visually, men are visually stimulated. They're visually stimulated. You know what I'm saying? There's something about the feminine physique that's going to do something, that, that just does something to men. And for women, it, it, it's the same thing, but it's, it's just in a different form. Women are audibly driven. It's something about the way um, a, a man a, a man can communicate to a woman that does something to a woman. Men are stiff, men are visual, women are audible. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, man, like you, when you have sex with a man and you're consenting, that makes you that man equal. Your consent, you're consenting to sex. So in the act, you're you're his equal. And and at the end of the day, this is what it boils down to. Each individual has to take responsibility for their own reproduction. Period. Got to take responsibility. If you're a man and you're going up in between this woman's legs and you ain't got no condom on, that's on you. If you're a woman and you letting this man go up in between your legs with no condom on, that's on you. That's on you. Take personal accountability. But also, too, also, too, though, I mean, even... Even if you look at it like this, a woman naturally is going to be doing more for the child, so she should be more protective of her own self, you know, her own body. Because in the exactly. day, I mean, like I said, we can we can say it goes both ways, but a lot of the time, you're the one that's carrying the baby, you're the one that's going to put your put your life on the line, giving birth. You know what I mean? So you yeah. when you not be when you be more cautious of whoever you, you lay down with. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like think, think about it. You're the woman. You're the one who's going to be carrying around a, a carrying around a parasite essentially for nine months. You're yeah. the one who's going to have to who's going to have to go to the hospital, go through all that pain delivering this child. You're the one who's going to be going through that. So why would you take a casual approach to that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you're right about that. I mean, you like you know what you don't have attention on. You know, just don't you ain't having no sex. We're right with that. You know? And that's what these women want you to do. I'm not about to blame these men for being heterosexual men. You know, y'all women know these men want want the sex. So why you make why you giving it to them and not making them put a condom on? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's so true. you're not you're, you're not children. You are not children. Y'all are grown women. You are grown. You are strong. You are independent. Can't nobody tell you nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that gives you a level of accountability. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But yeah. But I, but I got to go because I actually was about to do something on YouTube or nothing. Okay, man. I appreciate you joining me tonight. I appreciate the discussion, man. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll, we'll do it again, man. We'll, I'll have you on my on my YouTube channel one day. We'll do it again. All right, man. Like I said, y'all haven't subscribed to uh, The Great Liberators. Go check the out. He's doing big things on YouTube. I'm very proud of him. 
you know, whether y'all agree, disagree, he knows how to, you know, stir the pot up. So, hey, you know, check him out on YouTube and, uh, you know, appreciate you joining me tonight, you know. All right. Um, always good, always good content. You know, we may argue, but we always have a good time. You know, we be bros at the end of the day. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's all it's all to the good. But yeah, though, like I said, uh, you get home safe and uh, be, be safe, be easy, man. All right, yeah. All right, peace. All right.